Now, Nigeria's economy has been marred with surging inflation, rising food prices, and other social challenges. President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu's administration has implemented key principles to remodel the economy to bring about growth and development, such as unification of foreign exchange market, subsidy removal, and others. But yet, some economic issues still persist. Well, let's break it down further as I'm being joined via Zoom by the Chief Executive Officer of the CFG Advisory, Mr. Tilewa Adebajo, to extra these issues. Good afternoon, Mr. Adebajo. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, well, let me start with um, the unification of the exchange rate or the efforts by government aimed at unifying the exchange rate, allowing demand and supply take charge. Uh, We've talked about this before now, and I know you've had suggestions around this. Uh, would you say this really is the way to go? Uh, we're talking about uh, helping to maybe let the Naira get some strength. Do you think this is the way to go? Definitely. Uh, I think without a doubt, I think it's a step in the right direction uh, because we do not need any issues with the uh, multiple rates. Um, and um, if you take a look at the parallel markets now, you see that the parallel markets have not moved uh, because the official market is reflecting the true value of the Naira. And uh, when you see a convergence between the two rates, you think you know that at least you are dealing with the right uh, metrics. Um, so what is important now is to focus on the supply side uh, for the foreign exchange. Um, the first step being that you need to restore confidence into the domiciliary accounts. These are very important. Um, at a point in time, close to between 25 and 35% of the money supply in Nigeria was held in foreign currency, in DOM accounts. Uh, this number has gone down to below 5%. Uh, so we need to restore that confidence because if you restore the confidence and you increase the supply, then you have a situation whereby people have confidence in the markets and then you remove speculation and the rates will definitely stabilize. And by the time you resolve the issues with the oil theft and try to increase production, um, with the removal of the subsidies, we'll be saving close to 10 to $15 billion a year. Uh, and all the money is going into the government for all the JAC accounts and the FAC accounts and even the Federation accounts will be changed at this amount of money. And you will definitely improve the supply of uh, dollars into the system. And at that point in time, we can begin to see a reduction in the rates of the of, uh, of the Naira. So I think it's important because a static exchange mechanism uh, is very devastating to the economy. Mm. Uh, but some say Nigeria remains an importing nation, and that, uh, importing nation, and that could be a challenge that we need to also, you know, take advantage of our manufacturing sector and at least maximize uh, the potentials in that space so that we can increase exports so that we could also gain or get in some more FX. If we continue like this, how long do you think that transition will take if we don't build our export market? Well, we have to understand that this is a slow grind. Uh, it's a marathon and it's not a sprint. Uh, so there are no quick fixes. So what is important is that we need to see consistency in both uh, fiscal policy, monetary policy, and trade policy. Um, Trade policy is what you're talking about with exports and imports. We need to review our tariff structures in such a way that the components of manufactured goods sometimes carry a higher duty than the finished goods itself. So that in itself is an incentive for people to import the finished goods than to instead of manufacturing uh, the product itself here. So we need a review of our trade policy, uh, our tariff structures, to be able to create incentives for manufacturing. Um, and, you know, it's more important than when you create an enabling environment, then you can begin to see, and you grow the economy, a lot of these things will begin to happen naturally. So it's a confidence game, uh, and this is what is starting right now. Subsidy removal, you've also commended that, and some are saying the right step to be taken now is to increase minimum wage for workers, uh, say, look at about 50,000 naira per month, some are saying this would also <laughs> throw inflation on the other side. Uh, how would you react to this? How do we strike a balance? Well, in striking a balance, it's important that you have very, very strong monetary policy. Um, 
By the way, uh, federal government uh, in the last administration increased the civil service uh, workers. As of April last year, the civil servants were already high, earning a higher wage. Uh, so at the civil service level, they already made those adjustments. Um, and those adjustments will come. Uh, what is important is that we should do these things gradually, uh, but because we haven't done them over the years, we tend to go with a big bang approach. But having said that, I think inflation is not something that is new. Uh, inflation in Nigeria is cost push inflation, um, as opposed to demand pull, uh, which has to do with um, a level of consumer spending and uh, purchasing power issues in terms of consumption. Uh, we do not have that problem in Nigeria because of high unemployment and very weak purchasing power. Uh, so the productivity is quite low. So inflation is driven by three key factors. Uh, the 23.7 trillion ways and means, which is the biggest driver of inflation in Nigeria. Um, food inflation. And now you have the uh, uh, fuel subsidy removal, which is increased the cost of fuel. Uh, these are direct inputs into production, which will impact the economy. Um, the inflation itself needs to be managed. Uh, inflation is not going to be temporary, but it can be brought down over time. We've done that before. If you take a look at some of the data I was looking at, between 2020, uh, between 2019 and 2022, ways and means financing increased by about 1,000%. Uh, there's a strong correlation between the increase in ways and means financing and the level of inflation, which is now by 23.5% at an 18-time uh, high. Um, at a point in time, uh, between 2018-2019, 20, 20, inflation was brought down to 11%. Um, and it was as a result of ways and means specifically that drove the inflation to such high levels. Uh, so if we uh, take control of the ways and means financing, we should be able to manage inflation. That would help with growth and create real values. Because real rates are negative in this country, and also real yields are also negative, because the rate of inflation is higher than the interest rates and the yield on most uh, securities. So that is something that we need to correct. And it's something that is doable with focused and consistent monetary policy uh, that can be easily achievable. Mm. Uh, while staying around this, our debt remains scary. Uh, that's what President Tinumbu is inheriting. Uh, and uh, many will say that part of the reason why we have to let subsidy go so that we don't continue to pile up debt. But another argument from another angle is that um, government also needs to look at cost of governance uh, so that we begin to address some of this. And so that the people, masses will know that government is also very, very serious this time, and it's not business as usual. I don't know how that comes to you. Well, I mean, clearly, we've seen the national policy economic report that the government has put together as to how they want to approach monetary policy, fiscal policy, investment policies, and how they want to get things done. Um, there talks about, you know, dusting up and reviewing the Oransoye report and trying to implement it, which is welcome development. And I, like I've said, yes, uh, the cost of governance is definitely too high and we're not seeing the value added. Uh, government is, has a budget of 20 trillion naira a year, which is contributing about only 9% of GDP. So it's important to understand that government is only contributing, or the value of the government budget is about only 9% of the Nigeria's GDP. Uh, so government is, in terms of output, is a very insignificant player uh, in the economy. But what government does is the fact that because it controls money supply, um, it tends to distort the economy uh, because the policies, the macro policies and the microeconomic policies are out of tune with fiscal policy and and for trade and investment policy. So it's important that we see that alignment to be able to grow the economy. Because if this economy is going at about 7.5% per annum so sustainably for about two to three years, the issues of unemployment, um, productivity uh, will be resolved. Uh, so I think that's the silver bullet and that's what the government really needs to aim for. But like I've said earlier, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, and to be able to regain confidence, we need to see consistency in policies. 
So the budget that the government is going to produce in 2024 is a very, very important signal to everybody uh, because by that time they should have I, uh, firm up their medium-term economic framework. Uh, by that time, they should already have a handle on the real situation uh, because right now they're just getting to grasp with what is on ground. Uh, so when we see their budget for next year, I think we can begin to see more optimism in that side. And what is also uh, critical is the um, Article 4 report that the IMF is going to do in the first quarter of next year. It is important by the time the IMF comes next year to do their Article 4 report that a lot of all these reforms are already articulated in the budget uh, so that with that Article 4 report is positive for the government and it will send a strong signal to the international markets and our credit rating abroad will also begin to improve uh, not only for the international markets, but also for the domestic investors, for the domestic market here, uh, and for the well-being of Nigerians. It is very, very important and critical steps. So the first quarter of next year, after the IMF Article 4 report, uh, is going to be very critical for the government. So that is something the government needs to work towards to ensure that uh, that report is uh, confirms or endorses a lot of the reforms that are taking place Almost finally now, Mr. Adebayo, a, 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 a beautiful time spent, really, I, I must tell you. The ultimate aim of, of government also at this time is to attract investments. I'm concerned about this uh, because we see what's happening with our markets and all of that. Investors sitting on the fence and, you know, coming in with very quick monies and we don't have enough of foreign direct investments. Now, do you see us sending that good signal uh, at this time? Even following the meeting in France and the outing of the president, many are saying that it seems Nigeria is ready for business at this time. i just like your thoughts around that. Well, the most important meeting for the president now is the United Nations General Assembly coming up in September. Um, that will be his first introduction to the global audience. And I think it is important that they begin to prepare for that meeting. Uh, because he's going to be able to address the UN General Assembly. Uh, and that is at that point in time, he can set the agenda for the world for Nigeria. Um, all the world leaders would also be in the UN. Uh, it is important to use that meeting to be able to set up our strategic partners. Um, the World Bank meetings will also be coming up at that point in time, and that will be the first meeting. Um, uh, by this time, I guess the government will still be working on their budgets, but it is at that time uh, within the sidelines of the UN General Assembly uh, that we should begin to put together some sort of investment promotion uh, uh, schedule around that to be able to meet key people, identify key people you need to meet, um, you know, define your agenda and to be able to target uh, specific people to be able to uh, change the narrative for Nigeria, um, you know, it's very important to do that because, you know, within these sidelines, there are many international bankers, international financiers, heads of states, uh, heads of world organizations, WTO, the World Bank, uh, uh, the IMF, and all these critical organizations will also be attending or will be at the sidelines of this. It's important that Nigeria puts up a good show uh, to be able to sell uh, the new programs of reform to the world. So that would be the first opportunity that is of substance uh, for, the Niger for the new Nigerian government. And we need to prepare for that, both from the political standpoint of view. We need to be able to articulate our foreign policy. We need to be able to um, articulate where we stand on global issues. And more importantly, we need to be able to let them know that Nigeria is a serious investment destination and the reforms that we want to carry out uh, are going to be quite serious. So once you are able to um, put your economy right, uh, you don't need to tell foreign direct investors to come in. They can see for themselves. The local investors themselves will start. All the companies here will start to expand their factories. Uh, they'll start to expand their operations, their services, and you know get to do things. When that begins to happen and we have confidence... Uh, we have our improved uh, uh, credit ratings globally, uh, then that will signal a lot of interest in coming back to Nigeria. But we also need to sustain it. 
and we need to show the world that we're serious. So I think that we need to prepare for the uh, United Nations General Assembly in New York uh, in September. Uh, it will be a very important outing for us. All right, interesting conversation. But, but just one minute, are you worried about any global issues that could affect some of our projections at the moment? Russia and Ukraine war is still there. Well, all those global issues are positive for Nigeria. Uh, we had oil selling at $100 a barrel. All these disruptions have increased oil prices. But unfortunately, Nigeria was not able to take advantage of this windfall. Um, it was claimed that we used all these monies from the windfall to pay for oil subsidies. So for me, it's such a, such a big shame because the global events have worked to our advantage. But unfortunately, we have not taken advantage of it. I must thank you so much, Mr. Tilewa Adibajo, for finding time for us. Uh, out of your tight shadow, Chief Executive Officer, the CFG Advisory. Do enjoy the rest of your day and a great weekend. Thank you very much.